John Berger, in his book, Understanding a Photograph, has brought together many different disciplines, ranging from visual materials to photographs, paintings, sculptures, movies, you name it, it's in here. He's brought together people's stories, their emotional responses to them, and for him, everything all amalgamates together it's very important to understand all these different aspects of a photograph to really understand what an image is representing and showing. So in the next few minutes, we're going to go ahead and dive into this book and find out what we can take away from it. John Berger was born in 1926 in England. He went on to serve in the Second World War as an officer in the army. After coming back, he went to the Chelsea Art School and then went on to the Central School of Art in London. He's well known for his essays in particular. He is a novelist, an art critic, a painter and a poet as well. In 1972, John Berger won the Booker Prize for his novel G in a most controversial move. He then decided to take his prize money and give half of it to the Black Panther movement in the US. At that time, there was a lot of racial strife. His donation was seen by the right wing in the UK as a disgrace to the prize that he had won. The for left wing also hammered him and said that he hadn't given all of his money away to the Black Panther movement. While having a belief in something, trying to support a cause that he believed in, he was ultimately hammered from both sides in the UK. His first chapter, Image of Imperialism, is certainly one of the most powerful essays that he's written. Here are two images. The first one is of the body of Che Guevara, a freedom fighter based in Latin America. And this second image is a Rembrandt painting of the anatomy lesson of Dr. Nicholas Topp. This first chapter analyzes both the picture and the Rembrandt painting. Both images are looking at the dead in different ways. The photograph is a representation with a political motive behind it, whereas the Rembrandt painting is more from a medical perspective. It's fascinating to see how John Berger looks at both these images, of which are using the human body as an example, but for two very different purposes. One to show authority, one to show the influence of the army in one country, whereas the other showing possibilities of learning from the dead body and then moving scientific knowledge further. He analyzes it in such a way that you see things from a very di different perspective. So it got me thinking, well, how different or what is the mechanism of power for imagery today. In the past, particularly during the Cold War, it would have been used for uh, political motivation, whether you were communist or you were allied. It would have come across for a particular message that needed to be communicated, whether to promote communism or to promote capitalism. But today, we don't have those dualities occurring. Today, in our world, social media is incredibly influential. So I wonder if John Borger was alive today, what he'd have to say about social media and whether that was a new form or form of influencing, making an example of photography in a certain way. This is a fascinating way of looking at both art and photography. It made me really think about what was the importance of social media in the world that we live in today. For John Berger, this first chapter, he's trying to communicate that really photography is no different from art, as in painting, for example. For him, photography is something that anybody can do and communicate their message through it. For him, the importance of being immersed in the image itself and what the people are saying is fundamentally more important than anything else in the image itself. So what were the highlights from this book? This book is ultimately a collection of essays over a long period of time that have been compiled together. The string that ties them all together is the social human connections that John Berger makes throughout the course of this book. Now there's elements of which I agree with to a certain extent, but there's other connections that he makes which are a little bit more tenuous and I'm not sure 
how he's making those links and what the reason behind those links are. In the suit and photograph chapter, John Berger shows us an image of three farmers going to a dance. John fixates on the cheapness of their suits, the way they've been cut. He really goes into quite a lot of depth about it. Ultimately, what he's trying to communicate is how different is it to the world that we live in today? Thinking back now, living in the current era that we're living in, if you went back and looked at how people lived back then and what they did and how people live represent themselves formally today, have things really changed that much? At times, John Berger drifts into a historical analysis which goes away from the purpose of looking at the, the photo and it can be a little bit distracting at times. One example of this is in the appearances chapter. He shows a picture of a hussar in Hungary, I believe, who is talking to this lady. She's holding a baby and he's got his own interpretation of who and what that relationship is. And it's very difficult for a lay person who doesn't actually know who the people are in the image to make that interpretation. And I think there are some challenges when it comes to him then going into a lot of detail from his perspective. Now he may know who those people were and then therefore his argument would be a little bit more valid. But from a completely neutral perspective, an objective perspective, for me it didn't really make much sense for him to go into a long historical narrative after that. Later in the chapter, there is an image of a child with a sheep in uh, on a farm. Again, he then drifts off into this long social kind of explanation behind the image and the, the thinking behind it. And actually, for me, it was more about just an imagination of what childhood could be like from one perspective. I think sometimes John Berger thought about things a little bit too much, kind of just let his mind just get carried away with it. Photographs of Agony is another chapter within the book, which is definitely one that you should read if you have the time. It really demonstrates John Berger's ability to describe photos so well and so rich detail that you probably wouldn't even need to look at a photograph. You would instantly know what's happening. In this chapter, John Berger talks about the incredible work of Don McCullen during the Vietnam War. I'm sure you've seen images online. They are really haunting images. For me, after reading the, the chapter, I was thinking, for Don McCullen, was his experience different to the one that we see, the framed experience that we get from the image itself. I wonder how different it was for him to be able to be there and be present in that moment in time. Ultimately, the image is just a reflection of our lived experience. How we take photographs or how we interact with photographs is deeply linked with our own lived experiences, emotional, social, economic, whatever they might be. Don McCullen is still around and he shoots portraits and landscapes on the 4x5 camera. I was thinking to myself, if I had been in his position in the Vietnam War as a photographer, how would I have processed that? Okay, so you might be thinking, okay, Hassan, my time's short. If there's going to be one chapter that I could read, which one would it be? Well, the title for that is Jitka Hanslova. It's the penultimate chapter within the book itself. I think for me, it is a good summary of pretty much the whole book. He discusses the forest, how the forest is a representation of many things in, in life. For me, he's drifting a bit like how he drifts in the rest of his book across many different themes and ideas. He's able to, I think, succinctly communicate what he's trying to say throughout the course of the book in that one chapter at the end. So what are the key takeaways from this book?
In this book, John Berger is drawing together many different disciplines together in one place. He constructs a narrative about what the essence of a photograph ultimately is. You can be anybody, you don't have to be a pro photographer, you can be anybody from anywhere. As long as you are able to communicate the lived human experience, the emotional experience, that is ultimately the essence of a great photographer and a great photograph as a consequence from it. For me, the biggest takeaway from this book was that it got me thinking about what I was photographing, how I was photographing it, and the importance of the work that I'm doing. And I think for anyone reading this book, they will inevitably read it in a different way, in a way that resonates with them, but will really get them to think about why and how they photograph. As a consequence of that, certainly it will push them in the direction in which they need to go to improve and build on their work further. John Berger's immersive writing gives you a sense of great depth, understanding of what makes a great photograph. Having read through the entire book, you really get a sense of how you can go away and improve your own photography. It gives you lots of ideas about how you can look and frame things in a different way and then achieve, produce work which resonates with other people. It really gives you a sense of how to refine your own style of photography, your unique style of photography, and gets you to really think about how you can contribute that style in a new, a effective way, which resonates with, with everyone around you. For John Berger, form and content don't exist. It's the image and what people are saying around it that he gets really immersed in. In his second chapter, he says, it looks as though whatever kind of activity it might be is going to outlive painting and sculpture as we have thought them since the Renaissance. He goes on to say, no work of art can survive and not become a valuable property. How you define what value is, is entirely up to you. It can be economic, it can be social, it can be political, it can be environmental. To everyone, it's gonna be different, however, the mechanisms of appreciating or consuming art continue to be refined and changed. We can see that today with the birth of NFTs, for example. Who knows what's going to be next? The key is to keep on creating. For me, it's amazing how John Berger has brought together so many different elements of the art world together and created this wonderful book. At times he does drift off, you're left with a sense of, I don't really know where you're going with this stroke, are you just trying to show off your historical knowledge? Regardless of that, it's still a outstanding piece of work which helps to synthesize hundreds of years of artwork, how we view and see the world. You can take away a tremendous amount from ultimately a very short read. The book in many ways is timeless. It goes through looking at past industrialists, how imagery was used to influence people. If you look at what's happened in the past and then you objectively look at what's happening today, it really gets you to think about what is going on and what the future might hold. I would highly recommend whether you are a photographer, you're a young photographer, you're an old photographer, you're an experienced photographer, you're a pro photographer, you're not a photographer at all, to go and pick up this book and read it. Anybody is going to see it in a different light and it would certainly enrich your knowledge and your understanding of how and why we perceive the world in the way that we do every day. I think that is going to be quite enriching for you. Understanding a photograph is just a drop in the ocean to the work that 
John Berger has done over the course of his entire lifetime. He's written so many other essays and books, it goes without saying that you should definitely go and check them out. He's also translated lots of work of foreign writers, translated them into English. Most recently, he translated poetry by Mahmoud Darwish, who is a Palestinian writer. Susan Sontag has written a book called On Photography. Both John Berger and her used to have discussions about photography. I don't think they necessarily agreed and they had very different writing styles. Certainly Susan Sontag had a more intellectual way of writing and that might be more appealing to you. Have you read Understanding a Photograph or other photographic books? If so, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what your thoughts were about this book, what your thoughts were about my summary of it. Did you agree, disagree? Any suggestions or recommendations of books that I could go on to read next? I'd love to hear from you. I'll see you on the next video.